Hello, 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 and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jen, and this particular video series is called Zen Jen's Vlog. This is basically a video blog that I'm doing about various different experiences, and I am essentially training myself here to turn negative experiences into positive videos, right? Because the whole point is to help people. And unfortunately, I've had a lot of what people would consider negative experiences. And so I'm trying to take those and put a positive spin on them, right? So this video is how to realize your own worth and build your confidence from the inside out, right? Because inner work is what it's all about. It's all about habits and it's all about the work that you do in here and in here, right? The reason why I'm making this video now is because very recently I have been, um, I've been noticing that women are kind of mean and they seem to be especially mean if they're insecure and they seem to be especially mean to those people who are not insecure. Um, like bullying kind of, you know, except it's, it's, it's written off as being catty as women right now. When, when there's a bunch of grown ass women acting like high schoolers and gossiping and talking crap and giving you the stink eye and, uh, you know, going behind your back and telling your employer all kinds of mat nasty, horrible things about you and complaining about your work and whatever have you. I mean, this is like a conglomeration of various different situations because I don't want to get into any particular specifics. But when people fall into doing things like that, that tells me that they are very, very insecure with themselves, right? And they're taking it out on somebody else in order to build themselves up which is despicable. That's bullying. That is the definition of bullying. So rather than talking crap about these particular people on my YouTube channel, I decided that I'm going to talk about seven habits that have helped me to build my confidence level and hopefully it will help you guys to build your confidence level. Um, if you have fallen into that kind of behavior before where you're gossipy and talking trash about someone just to build yourself up, go ahead and forgive yourself. You don't need to worry about the other person because they have their own journey to go on, but go ahead and forgive yourself and move on and just try to work on being the best version of you that you can be because you already know deep down that that's fucked up behavior and you shouldn't be doing it. You know what I mean? So if that's the case, it's okay. It's going to be okay. You always have another day to be your best self. That being said, the first habit that I want to talk about is meditation. Now, I absolutely adore meditation. I started meditating about 12 months ago, really seriously, like every day, right? I've fallen out of it a little bit. Um, now my meditating is kind of sporadic, which is bad. Um, I need to get back into a routine, but I still meditate very regularly. I still put on, if, if I don't have a chance or if I forget to meditate during the day, then I basically put on some meditation music at night and meditate while I sleep, you know, um, with the intention of working whatever it is out during my sleep, which your subconscious is very powerful. So sleep meditation, very powerful stuff. It, it completely works. You know what I mean? Um, meditation has all sorts of health benefits, including uh, boosting your immune system and the benefits, some of the benefits that I find very fascinating and that I've actually experienced, okay, is number one, I used to think all the time. I used to not be able to shut my brain off, um, which caused sleepless, sleepless, sleepless nights many, many, many times. Yeah, not good. Um, overthinking, thinking too much. You can't, you, you get stuck in like cycles of negative thinking, right? So 
when I started meditating, I essentially learned how to turn down my brain. It's like some of the thoughts are still there, sure. And some days are more active than others, I guess. But some of the thoughts are still there. And it just, I just don't notice. I don't notice them because I don't notice anything until I turn my brain back up, my thoughts. And the only times I ever do that is if I'm working, like if I'm editing a book or researching something or creating content for my courses or creating content for this video. You know what I mean? Like I, I do plan out what I'm going to say somewhat or the points, the talking points, you know? So when I don't need my brain, I just leave the thoughts running in the background. Like, okay, you do your thing, man. I'll be back when I need you, you know? And you would be amazed at the other kind of side effects of that. Um, one of them is that your perception of time actually slows down because you're not constantly bombarded with thoughts. So it becomes kind of quiet. Oh, I love it. It becomes kind of quiet and it's nice. It's restful. It's peaceful, you know? Um, so your perception of time slows down. Meaning that you literally have more time to get things done, or it seems that way. Because the only time that you're actually using your mind is when you're brainstorming ideas or creating something, right? And when you're doing it that way, the only time that you're actually thinking is when you're doing something inspired, which means that you're feeling really, really good while you're doing it, which in turn means that you're attracting more of what makes you feel that good while you're working, right? I figured this out and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal because I don't work unless I'm absolutely inspired. You know, I don't work unless I'm inspired or I pull myself into an inspired mode, right? I really like it. <laughs> it's so, so less stressful, you know, less stressful and more peaceful. It's nice. So there's that. Now, this is the one that people have a hard time believing. When you slow your perception of time down, you actually slow down your aging process on a cellular level, right? Through law of attraction. And in some cases, you may even reverse your aging process, depending, you know. So I have noticed that, you know, especially over the last 12 months, I've gotten lots of compliments about how young I look, about how good my skin looks, about especially, um, for example, yeah, here. So I have like stretch marks and stuff over here because of how big I was. But if you'll notice, like it's really not that bad, you know, like my skin is pretty elastic. So I've been doing coconut oil every time I shower. I just cover myself in coconut oil because it's really good for your skin. And anything that I do on my skin or with my skin, now I try and keep it as organic as possible, as natural as possible. I'm working on getting to a point where I no longer use shampoo and conditioner because I would like to instead use um, apple cider vinegar and coconut oil just exclusively on my hair as well. So that's just me. Those are things that have worked for me. And these are things that I've noticed about meditation. Uh, those little beauty tricks are free, by the way. <laughs> um, but those are just some of the little benefits. You know what I mean? It's, it's really a cool, a cool thing when you start going on this journey of taking care of yourself. The second habit of to find or to realize your self-worth and to build your own confidence from the inside is to treat yourself nicely. Treat yourself well. Um, 
Most people get into relationships for this and pin their own happiness on the other person's actions and words. And just basically the other person is responsible for their happiness, which is completely unfair. It's completely unfair and it doesn't work. You cannot hold somebody else responsible for the way that you feel inside yourself. Your feelings are caused by your thoughts, you know? And yes, while someone may have influence, um, they are not responsible for the way you feel. You are responsible for the way you feel. Only you. Now, coming to this and actually living by this and actually getting into this habit is very, can be very difficult, can be tedious, especially if you're surrounded by people who don't understand what you're trying to do. So um, part of taking care of yourself might mean isolating a little bit from people who don't get it. Um, usually it involves exercise. So if you're not prepared to care for your physical body, then you may not be prepared to fully take care of yourself or take responsibility for yourself, but you'll get there, right? My journey has been a long journey so far. This has been a long time coming. I've been doing this for a while. So that's the only reason why I feel comfortable talking about it. If I haven't, if I hadn't been doing this for a long time, then I would not feel like I have the um, stories to illustrate what I mean, right? So by treating yourself well, what do I mean? I mean, do things that make you happy. Do things for you. Pamper yourself every once in a while. You know what I mean? On a, on a fairly regular basis, do something for you. Walk in nature if that's what you like. Um, for some people, it might be... I don't know, singing. I love to sing. I love to um, put on some loud music and dance around the house while I clean. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I enjoy it very much and it always makes me feel better. Um, treating yourself nicely also goes, in, goes into your thoughts. Um, don't beat up on yourself. Don't beat yourself up for stuff that you can't help. There's a big difference between feeling something organically and perpetuating it or wallowing in it. So if you feel something negative organically, like remorse, for example, if you did something wrong, um, or grief, grief is an organic negative feeling that you have to process through. You can't just avoid it, right? Um, if it's something that you feel organically, then experience the emotion, okay? Experience it, but don't perpetuate it with your thinking. Don't fall into the loop. Don't fall into the negative thought cycle, you know? So, again, there's a difference between feeling something organically and perpetuating it. So, no need to martyr yourself, no need to fall into perpetual victimhood, no need to fall into any of those bad thought habits. Um, if you become aware of these thought habits, then it is much easier to pull yourself out of them. If you are in these thought habits and you're unaware and you're unwilling to take responsibility for your own thought habits and you're blaming your emotions and your thoughts on other people, then you're probably not ready to realize your own self-worth quite yet. But you'll get there. Everybody will. We all do. But you can either choose to work for it and speed up the process or you can choose to continue to be ignorant on purpose, you know? It happens. It's to each their own. Live and let live, man. Whatever you want to do. But don't expect other people to make you happy because that's not their job. The third habit um, to help you realize your self-worth and build your confidence from the inside 
is to simplify and declutter your life. Um, I know I look like a hypocrite right now with the mess in the background, but believe it or not, this is very much simplified for me, although not so much decluttered yet. <laughs> um, if you can, go through old things, get rid of things, you know, put things away. Um, hang on a sec, I have to yawn. <laughs> Sorry about that. Put things away, organize, you know, whatever it is that you have to do to feel like you're simplifying your life. That's the main thing. Uh, clean out your email inbox, declutter your friends list. I mean, like whatever, whatever task you feel like you have to do, um, whatever you're drawn to do, go ahead and do that. Like, for example, I'm going to take some time this week to uh, go through all this stuff back here, you know it'll be fine. It's really not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? It's a mess. So what? Oh, well. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I am one of those people who is affected by clutter around me. So that's probably why my work has been kind of like all over the place. So we'll see how it goes after I'm done. <laughs> the fourth habit of realizing your own self-worth and building your confidence from the inside is to, if you can, remove yourself from toxic relationships. Liberate yourself from toxic relationships. Liberate yourself. If you find that you're clashing with people and there's constant arguing, there's constant drama. For me, it was I felt like I was standing up for myself for the first time in about a decade. So rather than being a doormat, like, and being just chill and okay with everything, even though it was insane, uh, I was drunk. Yeah, I, I had a lot of conditioning to undo, and I still do, you know. So for me, I felt like I was standing up for myself. However, for the other people involved, their perception was completely different of the situation. And that is to be expected, you know, perception is reality. Not everybody sees things the same way. So because we clashed so much. Um, it was a very, very much a blessing when a friend of mine needed me to house sit and pet sit. So I, I was able to kind of temporarily remove myself from that situation and get my thoughts gathered and get myself together and figure out what's what, you know, and it's still not over. Um, I'm actually still going to be here until, you know, a little bit into September. So there's still a couple weeks left. And this has been like a reprieve, like a nice break from all the drama and all the insanity. Um, yeah, if you can, if you can, if you can't remove yourself from a toxic environment or toxic relationships, then um, just stay focused. Try to stay focused on something that makes you happy. Something that you can do on a very regular basis, preferably every day, that will make you happy. That will keep you centered and grounded right? That will keep you from losing your mind. <laughs> um, the fifth habit, and here's where we get into the really cool ones. The fifth habit is to become a master of self-distraction, right? So you literally have to consciously give yourself ooh shiny syndrome. Oh, squirrel. You know what I mean? Um, there's there's an art to it because 
When you're laser focused on something, especially if that something is negative. Now, if you want to wallow in happiness, if you want to bask in the joy, then I am not going to say anything against that. You just do that as much as you possibly can because that is what's going to bring you the best things in life. Okay. So if you feel joy, bask in it. Be happy. Be as happy as you possibly can. And don't let your happiness depend on outside things and outside people and outside circumstances because then you'll never find happiness because happiness comes from inside. Very simple. It comes from within you. So becoming a master of self-distraction, if you find yourself in a negative thought loop or thought cycle, then you have to figure out ways to pull yourself out, right? Hang on. Oh my gosh. Why? Why do I keep yawning so much? Oh man. So you have to become a master of pulling yourself out of it. Okay. For me, this means listening to and singing some music, playing the piano, going for a walk, putting on some dubstep on some headphones and cleaning and dancing around at the same time because that's what I love to do and it's so fun and it just makes me feel good. Um, and, and Tony Robbins talks about physiology, right? So one of the first things that you can do if you don't have habits like that yet is start smiling. Just start smiling while you're talking for no reason. You know what I mean? Just start smiling and put your shoulders back, sit up straight, you know, just kind of lift your chin, relax a little bit, relax into it and smile. Lots of smiling. If you want to start laughing, go ahead and watch something funny. Watch some silly cat videos on Facebook or whatever. Whatever you got to do in order to get yourself back to a place of happy. Because happy is confident and confident is sexy. Simple as that, right? Which brings me to the next one. You have to master self-cheering up. Okay, this is the happy that I'm talking about. Now, if there's something that makes you feel super inspired every single time without fail, right? For me, it is playing the piano, singing, and writing, right? Composing music, creating things, being creative, hell, even painting. Oh my gosh. And I'm looking at getting into a few new habits too because... I don't drink anymore. I find myself with all this extra energy and all this extra time, you know, like I'm not worried about my next drink as much as I'm worried about hmm, what can I master now? What new habit can I implement? What new exercise can I do? How far can I push this yoga thing? You know, although that's not really my thought process. I love yoga. I love my routine, my little 10 minute daily routine but I'm not really that into it at this time. However, I am very, very into and very intrigued by spinning poi. So that's what I'm going to learn next. You know, maybe eventually I'll be able to do fire poi. <laughs> so that being said, um, go explore. Explore some things that make you happy. Not substance related. Okay, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no drugs. Just go explore some fun things. Go have some fun. Go out and live and have some fun. Get away from the screens. Get away from your phone. You know what I mean? That's half the world's problem right now is everybody's constantly... You know what I mean? It just doesn't, it doesn't serve you very well. It really doesn't. So I had to pause that for a second because my son needs to go to bed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this out here with the last habit, okay? Number seven is to express your love for yourself, right? Express your love for yourself. I don't care if you journal to do it and just say, I love me so much. I love this and this and this about myself. You can look in the mirror 
and start noticing what you do like about your physical body. And that's a good start um, in order to build your confidence about your physical self. But one of the things that works really, really well is to go in the bathroom, look in the mirror and look yourself in the eyes, okay? Look yourself in the eyes because the eyes are the windows to the soul. And your soul is who you really are. Your inner self, your inner being, your higher self, that's your soul. Those are just labels, okay? And go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, look yourself in the eyes. And say, I love you. Thank you so much for having my back. I want you to know how appreciated you are. You know? I want you to know that I really love you. And I think we're going to do amazing things together. You and I, we've got this. We've totally got this. I've got your back. You've got mine. And we're in this together. And we are going to accomplish amazing things. And I love you. Just doing that last one is going to help you a lot because real happiness, real confidence, these things don't come from other people. These things come from inside yourself. These feelings, they don't originate from outside of your body. They originate from within you. So doesn't it make sense to go to work at the source, you know, instead of reaching for little scraps of happiness out there, crumbs that other people are dropping? Wouldn't you want to go inside for the real feast? Just a thought. On that note, I hope that you're having a wonderful week. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. And I hope that this helps you in some way. If it does, or if you feel like it might help someone else that you know, go ahead and share it. And if you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I also have another channel called No Bull Self Publishing. If any of you are aspiring writers or want to learn about some of the publishing process and how to self-publish. So I've got a bunch of free tutorials, a bunch of free resources. I've got information on there about copyright and common, common, um, what is it? Uh, creative commons licenses and things like that. So, um, if that's a topic that you're interested in, that's my other channel. It's called No Bull Self-Publishing. And if you like my vlog, then go ahead and subscribe here and I will hopefully see you in the next video. And again, I hope this helps some of you. Um, I know it's helped me a lot on my journey and I have literally experienced magic from doing some of these habits, including losing a hundred pounds, like effortlessly. So if that's something that you are interested in doing, um, interested in knowing how to do. It all begins with learning your self-worth, realizing your own worth, and meditation, and just caring about yourself more than you care about other people. Because I guarantee you, they all care about themselves more than they care about you. I'll see you next time.